Good day to everyone in our Maple Grove United Church congregation and any visitors as we continue to celebrate and worship God together during this unusual time. Thanks again to Zoom and iMovie, Audacity and YouTube, we are able to offer worship in this online format. Thank you to everyone who continues to support our ministry and mission and our United Church Mission and Service Fund by PAR, that's pre-authorized remittance, or by mailing in your offering to our church office, or through Canada Helps. By pressing that button on our website at the bottom, your contribution goes automatically, and you get a receipt within minutes. It works really well. Thanks as well to those who have been able to help Kerr Street Mission during this time. And thanks to the many who find creative ways to support one another in our community of faith during these unsettling days. How wonderful to have a sense of being part of God's family on earth. Now, let us prepare to enter into God's presence this day in heart, mind, and spirit as we listen to our prelude, Scheherazad by Rimsi Korsakoff.
So let us now join in our words of invitation for this lovely day of May. Jesus said, love one another. We enter this day into this time to worship a God who is love, that we may learn to love one another. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants. Now I call you my friends. We offer our worship to God, whose friends we are in Jesus the Christ. We offer our praises and prayers to God and dedicate ourselves again to live in love and friendship through Jesus, the Christ. And let us join in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love and light, in your grace we find our peace and our place. In your presence we find our place. In your world we find our calling. Let us so hear and receive your word this day that we may become more and more faithful followers of your will and your way as we live out our lives with you. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Number 333 in Voices United. Follow the words on the screen. Our scripture lessons today are from two pieces of New Testament literature that bear the name of John. First, from the first epistle 
of John in the fourth chapter, verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent God's only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our wrongdoings and failings. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Christ and Christ in us because God has given us of the Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the divine parent has sent the Son as Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as Jesus the Christ is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from God is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Our gospel lesson from John 15. Verses 1 to 8. Jesus said to those around one day, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, God prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, just as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, and those branches are then gathered and thrown into the fire and burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My divine parent is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Thanks be to God for this word of God for God's people this day. Let us now listen to our meditative music, Aquarium.
by Camille Saint-Saëns. Let us pray. Gracious God, divine parent, keep us amazed at the depths of your love. Keep us mindful and appreciative of your unending compassion and gracious heart. Whisper in our ears and tune our hearts and spirits to love as Jesus loved and to ever abide in you as he did. Amen. I am the vine. You are the branches, said Jesus. There's something soothingly rustic forming in our minds when we hear that image. Perhaps we picture ourselves on a wine tour, visiting hillsides and fields of trellis vines, all arranged in neat rows all lined up intent on creating a flourish of plump clusters of grapes in the fall that are ripe for harvesting. Anticipatory rest and peace turning into promise. Jesus' first century audience saw their vines springing from terraces that were dug around rock-studded hills. They saw vines that would be straggling across the ground. And when clusters of grapes appeared, they would be lifted up onto a forked stick or set on top of a stone to ripen. And in each little vineyard, there would be a tower and a wine press. Jesus' audience would also have bopped their ears, making sure they heard correctly because the stories of prophets in their Hebrew scriptures, for instance, and other places that mentioned grapevines, such as the story we find in Ezekiel 17, 
repeatedly use fine imagery for the unfaithfulness of God's people. So what is Jesus up to in John's gospel doing a flip-flop declaring, I am the true vine and my parent God is the vine grower. Abide in me as I abide in you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains or abides in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you abide or remain in me. Jesus takes that previously negative image and gives it a positive spin. Hmm. Persistence, the determination to keep bearing fruit, even the ability to flourish in unfavorable conditions. Those sound like qualities one might indeed look for in faithful disciples and in healthy churches, do you think? Like grapevines, being a faithful disciple and developing a healthy church takes care and attention. In addition to watering and fertilizing, there is pruning and clearing out. Because in every vine, there are some woody branches that can't bear fruit because they're too soft. They're cut off, thrown away. On every vine, there are extra little shoots that need to get snipped so that the larger ones can be more fruitful. But let's not push the metaphor too hard so that we overreact. Pruning isn't about cleaning out the dead wood from a congregational role. It isn't about some folks' ideas getting approval while other folks' ideas get trashed. And it isn't about rooting out some who might be considered to be bad influences. It is about nurturing and cultivating each individual plant so that each one can contribute to the health of the whole vineyard. It's about cutting out or eliminating whatever is serving to deaden or weaken our spiritual lives. It could be about checking our own angers and appetites when they get out of control. It could be about snipping the influence and lures of taking avenues that might sidetrack us and hamper our maturation as disciples of Jesus. Losing suckers that inhibit our spiritual growth and true joy in life, that keep us overtaxed and feeling unfulfilled, that's good process and procedure. Some of those things might be the prejudices with which we've grown up. Some of those things might be the consequences of our own bad habits. Some of those things might be the seductions and imprints of materialism and consumer culture. The watering, fertilizing, and pruning are about helping each other stay healthy and growing our discipleship together. We do that for the health of the whole community of faith. And we trust that God, the vine dresser, is on hand to help us discern how to let go of what is unhealthful and how to promote and nourish those things that are healthful. There's more. It gets better. We also receive all the confidence, strength, comfort, peace, and joy that comes through abiding. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. If the branches of the grape plant become disconnected from the vine, they bear no fruit. They wither and atrophy and dry up, put themselves at risk of being fruit futile, which is dying. Staying connected matters, because then the nutrients do their job, the sap flows, and productivity happens. We have some sense of what this image is about, don't we? This abiding in Jesus, worshiping as often as we can reading and reflecting on scripture, 
maintaining, maintaining some kind of prayer and devotional practice, being willing to share our faith story with others, being engaged in some form of mission, seeking justice, resisting evil, caring for one another, reaching out to strangers, giving genistry, living with respect in creation, living love. Those are ways in which we keep the sap flowing. We could call it getting juiced by Jesus. At times it could be more evident, more intentional, more real. But it does happen. And we do such things because we are family, part of God's human global family. We do such things right here in this particular community of faith because some part of our deep yearning to belong and to matter is met for us at Maple Grove United. We do so because to some degree here we feel connected to God and to God's purposes for creation. And in this bizarre and challenging time of chosen isolation, social distancing because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have yet found ways and means of staying connected. And indeed, some of those connections have deepened. Some of them are brand new connections. When the time comes that we can gather again for worship in community in our sanctuary, we will reconnect. But for some time, there will be differences. And some of the ways in which we've been used to connecting may not be continued. We may initially still have to keep some personal distance apart from one another. We won't initially be able to sing or shake hands, hug, pass the peace of Christ until there's a coronavirus vaccine, until we're sure there's no risk of infection. We will have to figure out how to offer communion differently to ensure the health of all. Participants during a baptism, will have to have their health insured. We'll have to have interactive children's programs that are safe for them. We'll have to figure out how and when to share in those other connecting activities that help us build our sense of community and mutual support and caring, like church suppers and concerts, coffee hour, social times, fundraisers. We'll have to figure out how to be fruitfully yet healthfully and respectfully engaged in mission endeavors. We will have to find ways and means of persisting and upholding and valuing being part of the United Church of Canada. For me, and I hope so for you too, one of the valuable blessings of being part of this United Church of ours is the impetus to continue to be uniting and inclusive. We are intent on breaking down walls and barriers, not building them. We seek to form communities of faith where isms are not experienced. No sexism, no homophobia, no ageism, racism, nor ethnism, no classism. We remain open not only to conversations with participants of other denominations of the body of Christ, but also to mutual valuing of them, as well as possible mergers. We're also among the forerunners among Christian denominations in opening dialogue and building connections with persons of other paths of faith. We are about companionship and communion, not about absorption or worse, dominion. Our abiding in the bind is already, well, a blend, something like Merlot, Cabernet, Sauvignon, Shiraz. And we're not intent that all other vine dwellers become crushed and fermented in the same oak barrel so they turn out just like us. It's quite okay with us if abiding in the vine for others means they get to be Pinot Noir or Bordeaux or Chardonnay or Muscat or Riesling, whatever. The aim is to be the best and truest vintage one can be. For us and for others, that means that we persist and seek to flourish in the unfavorable and often toxic social, political, and cultural ground we currently inhabit. 
And in that effort, there will be grief as well as joy. There will be ongoing grief and pain in letting go of any illusions and ideologies that any of us have of being superior by virtue of skin tone or race or nationality or gender or orientation or economic net worth or any other way in which we differentiate ourselves from everyone else. By letting all that go, we open ourselves to widening our windows of mutual acceptance. Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams, a Buddhist priest, has an inviting way of issuing that calling. She urges citizens of planet Earth to leave off distinguishing ourselves from one another and to embrace ways and means of a more expansive belonging to each other. How can I know who I am, she says, if I don't know who you are? It is only through knowing the other that we can truly know ourselves. There we meet the other who is already within us. And in that way of walking with others, we find ourselves being made new. In our interpersonal encounters, we can find ourselves not becoming undone or obliterated, but actually finding what is true and just as we become free. She sees it as an invitation to our collective resurrection. A sense of belonging is one of our most basic and deepest human yearnings. People of faith realize that we need help with that, that we can't easily manage that all by ourselves. I am the vine. You are the branches and God is the vine dresser. Abide in me and I will abide in you. God is well aware of that deep yearning. Richard Rohr, a Franciscan priest and spiritual director in New Mexico, has recently written a wonderful and intriguing new book, The Universal Christ. Here is what I understand to be the kernel of his reimagining. He makes an appeal early on to affirm that Christ is not Jesus' last name. He's right. Jesus' last name was Ben Joseph. Christ is the title that his followers and the church have ascribed to Jesus. It comes from that Greek word that's used to translate the Hebrew word Messiah. Messiah that means God's anointed one, God's chosen precious and consecrated to be holy. Christ is then God's idea what the fullness of human life can be. And the Apostle Paul was especially keen on calling all followers of Jesus to be and live in Christ. Full being in Christ equates to living into the fullness of our being made in God's image from the very beginning. For Richard Rohr, Christ becomes the icon of transformation into wholeness and fullness of life. And if that is what I too am called and empowered to become, then that's also true for everyone else and everything else. Abiding in Christ means that I and you can only find our truest selves and purposes in communion with others and in communion with creation. Abide in me as I remain in you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can only do so if it remains on the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. Our abiding, being, and becoming in Christ can move us into that expansive belonging. We belong to the only family that God has, the global human family and the family of all creation. Our abiding in Christ is similar to how Aboriginal people speak of all my relations. Our abiding in Christ is akin to being caught up in the breath of Brahma, melding our lives into the way of the Tao, communing with Allah who is one, releasing ourselves from desire so we can find ourselves embraced in universal consciousness, 
Our abiding in Christ frees us to widen our friendship and relational circles so that we become true brothers and sisters with people whose skin color or culture or orientation or religious or non-religious affiliation is not like ours. Our abiding in Christ brings us already into that blessed realm that a Renaissance monk named Francis drew to our attention, a realm in which we get to say, brother sun and sister moon, sister water and brother fire where we are creatures among other creatures and partners in the web of life with plants and trees and rocks and stars. And if there's anything we encounter that we do not know by name, until we have that name, but I suppose we could begin by calling it cousin, it. In relating to and getting to know all those others, we find out who we are. In Christ, we stay connected to God and find our place of true belonging and purpose for living. Oh yes, let's remain on the vine so that we can bear fruit alongside all those other wonderful vintages that are also in process in the vineyard of God's creation. In 1968, with a significant addition in 1986, we formulated for our denomination a statement of what we believe it means to be a people of God in God's universe. It became known as a new creed, as an affirmation of faith, as a spoken sign of our staying connected to God, one another, all others, and all creation through Christ, like branches on the vine. I invite you wherever you are to share in these words with me and others around you. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, you have called us to follow in the way of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but also with acts of love. Seeking to be true friends of all, we offer our prayers on behalf of the church and the world. Nourish us by your spirit, so that as branches on the vine of Christ, we remember Christ's body, the church, and pledge ourselves to share your love in fruitful ways with those who are part of our own family circles, with those we name as friends and neighbors, with those we know in the midst of our congregation who are lonely, ill, grieving, over anxious, distressed. Nourish us by your spirit that we might branch out so that our love extends to reach and bless others who are lonely, hungry, oppressed, confused, or lost, or to those who have never heard that God is love. Nourish us by your spirit, so that our love includes all creatures, great and small, and plants, flowers, and trees, and hills, and plains, and mountains, and creeks, streams, rivers, lakes, seas the clouds, the sun, the rains, the moon and the starry heavens, 
the vast, mysterious, and wondrous universe which came from your hand and is unfolding into everlasting fullness. Guide us in the paths of discipleship so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others and for all creation, bringing the promise of God's realm near by our words and deeds. For that realm of wholeness and fullness of life, Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. Voices United, number 606. And you can follow the words on the screen as well. be filled with the love of God. Let us dance to the song of the Spirit. Let us befriend the Christ in each new day. May the love of God be ours always to share, the peace of Christ always ours to extend, and the power of God's Holy Spirit always ours to receive and to offer now and forever. Amen. Let us go now in peace, after which we'll listen to our postlude, trumpet tune by Henry Purcell. Oh, God.